Mr. Leiser. Mr. Leiser lives in Sleppenland, which is a very nice looking, very sleepy like place. Things are not walking very fast under I Birds in Sleepyland fly through ever slowly, not flying ever fast enough, they sometimes fall out of the sky. The grass took ever long to grow, it only needs cutting once a year, even the chest are nice looking, and ever slipper like Bentinder or time, everybody gets up in sleepy land. The answer is they don't get up in the morning. They get up in the afternoon. And incidentally, this is what a sleepy land clock looks like. Everything takes so long to do, there's only time. Four hours a day. Anyway, this story starts with Mr. Leiser being fast asleep in bed and in sleepy land. They call it being slow asleep. He spends rather a long time in bed because it's his favourite place to be. He opened his eyes, yawned, yawned again, and went back to sleep. Later, Mr. Nisha opened his eyes again, yawned, yawned again, and went back to sleep. Much ever later, Mr. Nisha got up, went to make his breakfast. We say, we say breakfast, although rarely it was tea time. He put the kettle on to make some tea. Kettles take two hours to boil in sleepy land. Then he toasted a slice of bread. Bread takes three hours to brown in sleepy land. Toast never gets burnt though. They toast never slowly. But ever well. While he was waiting for his kettle to boil and his bread to toast, Mr. Lysha went into the garden of the old cottage, which is where he lived. He sat down on a chair, and you can probably guess what happened next. It's right. He yawned, and yawned again, and went to sleep. Suddenly, he woke up with a jump, which is something that doesn't happen ever often to Mr. Lysha. And he was strangest reason why he woke up with a jump, well, it was because of the noise. Wake up, said the noise. Wake up, wake up, wake up. There were two men staring in front of him. Oh, Mr. Besser, said one of the men, and oh, Mr. Bustle, said the other. Come on now, said Mr. Bustle Bisley. We can't have you sleeping all day, added Mr. Besser, bustling Mr. Lysa to his feet. Oh, you, you, the bustling. Ross, Mr. Lysa, the bustle been busy, hoped out. Oh, said Mr. Lysa. Come on now, said Mr. Bisser. We haven't got all day. But um, no time for buts, said Mr. Bisser. Or ifs, added Mr. Bisser. There's the water chopping, bustle. There's the water chopping, the beds to make, and the floors to clean, and the curl to get, the windows to polish, and the plates to wash, and the grass to cut, and the hedges to clip, and the food to cook, and the clothes to mend, added Mr. Bisser. Oh, oh, who 
times to nurture, you know, if it dies. I want to clean the beds to get and the floors to cut and the chair to cook the windows to make the plates to mend the furniture to chop the grass to wash and just to cut and the cliffs to clip from the top. He got it all completely wrong. He was in such a ever dies. Then Bustle and Bitter sent Mr. Lysett to work. Chopping and making and cleaning and getting and polishing and washing and dusting and cutting and clipping and cooking and mending. Not to mention all the fetching and carrying. Poor Mr. Nicer. Now, they said when it finished, it's time for walk. And off they sit on the longest walk Mr. Light had ever been on. Mr. Lighter was one of those people who never walks when there's a chance of sitting down, and never sits down when there's a chance of laying down. But this day he had no choice. They made him walk for miles and miles and miles, until he felt his legs must be worn right down to the heavy bottom of his body. Poor Mr. Lighter. When they arrived, Back at John Cottage, Mr. Bitter said, Right, now for a run. Oh, no. And Mr. Nicer, I don't believe this whistle, said Mr. Bustle, producing the whistle. You've got to start running as fast as you can, added Bitter. Mr. Nicer grinned a deep curl and closed his eyes. Mr. Bustle, Put the whistle to slips. Put the whistle. Put the whistle again. Mr. Lysher, uh, Mr. Lysher, started to run, but his legs weren't getting him anywhere. He opened his eyes and looked down to why. And he had a strangest reason why. He wasn't going anywhere, was because he was sitting on a chair in the garden. And there was no sign of Mr. Bitter or Mr. Bustle. It had all been a terrible dream. And the whistle was the whistling kettle boiling in the kitchen. Mr. Lyser heaved a sigh of relief. And then he went into his kitchen and sat down to have his breakfast and to think about his dream. But you know what happened next, they're true. I can't, Mr. Lyser. I can't, I can't, I can't. <laughs> You'll be funny, his dream is. And let's end this next order. Turn it, maybe. See you next time in the next order. It's turned, Emma, and turned, and Mr. Arthur Lur. Uh, uh. <coughs>